2212. Yeah, thanks for having me here. So I'll just dive right in and um, walk you through a little bit of an intro here. So um, my name is Alexey. Um, a fun fact about me is I'm right-handed, but I play frisbee with my, with my left hand. This guy's clearly not me because he's catching it with the right hand, so that's exactly the opposite of what I would do. But that's fine. Um, I uh, run a company called Wizard on Demand. Wizard on Demand produces technical blog posts and documentation for developer-focused companies, as Milos uh, mentioned before. And uh, the end goal of this presentation, so at the end of this presentation, uh, my goal is for you to walk out of here and, and say, you know, is it's really possible to have a GraphQL API that users understand, and now I understand what kind of documentation they need to provide to achieve that. In order to get there, we're going to talk about three things. So first, we're going to talk about um, uh, kind of what documentation do you need, right, in, uh, when you're building your GraphQL API. Then um, the very important question is, you know, is my documentation is good or bad, or like how do I know if, um, what, where I am in terms of documentation right now? And then if my documentation is not where I want it to be, then how do I make it better? So those are the three things. And to dive right in, uh, a question that uh, I get ans uh, asked very often is, what's the value of documenting GraphQL API, right? Many times it comes from backend developers and they're like, oh, this is self-documenting, right? This is, you can just press a button and have a bunch of stuff generated. You can look at the schema. Yes, that is all true, right? This is, uh, this is one of the very awesome parts of GraphQL, but then, Users still have questions after seeing that automatically generated documentation, right? If you start thinking about, you know, how do I authenticate? And authentication is different in, in, in different APIs, right? There is no kind of one way that this always works. And then questions like why I should even use your API, right? What does your service do? If I don't really know much about your service, kind of how do I even figure out what that is? If I only have your self-generated docs, right? And then stuff like rate limits and restrictions and query complexity limits, right? And all of that like very complicated stuff just starts getting very interesting. And then, you know, if I want to use your, your um, API, do you have maybe SDKs? Do you have some libraries that I can use? Or like, is it just, just this that you're giving me? So there's many questions that this customers still, still have after seeing your docs. And the thing is, GraphQL uh, self-documenting features are nice, but they just don't solve your documentation problem, right? They just don't solve it completely. They help, but they don't, don't eliminate it. And let me show you exactly what I mean by documentation problem here. So these are kind of the, the, the four groups that I, that I usually work with. It's like, you know, companies that have zero documentation for their API. And then you can see like a few people who have like reverse engineered their, their API here and have figured out how to use it. And then some basic docs, very few people. Oh, sorry. And by the way, this is, imagine that this is kind of a bunch of people coming to your website, right? We don't really care how they get, uh, got there. Your marketing department had, uh, did a good job. They landed on your documentation site. And then out of these 100 people, right, if you have no documentation, only one or two will probably actually get started, try out your API, right? If there is no documentation, they just cannot do it, right? Because they don't know how to authenticate, they don't know how to do all this stuff, right? Next up, if you have basic docs, a few more people will figure it out because now authentication maybe is clear, right? But then now they're a bit stuck. Maybe they found something in your docs which is inconsistent. Maybe they don't really understand what this is for. As you move to good docs and you provide much more context, you provide a broader, for a broader set of people an explication, uh, explanation of how to, how to use your API, the amount of people from those who actually manage to use your API is much higher than here, right? You can see how it goes here to here to here. And then you go to get to world class docs and it jumps, right? And suddenly many, many more people who come to your documentation site can actually figure out what this is for. Right, and so the size of the documentation problem for these companies is, you know, everything from here to the top and then everything from here to the top. This is a huge problem, right? This is a huge problem that you can solve with documentation. And um, the thing is, you know, talking about developers, right, and, and we are building stuff for other developers, and uh, you just don't show people sales pages for APIs, right? This is not the thing you do. What you do is you give them something to look at, and then hopefully they pick up your API, and they self-serve their way into your API, right? They figure out how to how to use it, look at the docs, and, and figure out how to look at the code snippets and, and get going. The value of, of, of um, so the self-serve model is really, really interesting. So has anyone used any of these in the, at the airport recently where like you don't have to talk to a person to send your baggage in? No? This is, I think it's, it's pretty modern. It's amazing that in 2019, this is the first time we're seeing this. But 
it's actually really, really good. You just come in and you scan your boarding pass and you put your bag in and it's gone and you don't have to talk to the person and there's like 60 of these. It's, it's super exciting. I don't know why you are not so excited. I was so excited when I saw this. It was good. And so uh, I was saying about this uh, in terms of value of, of self-serve, right? I could just walk up to this thing. I could do what I needed to do. I didn't need to wait for anyone. I didn't need to wait in the line, right? It's, it's amazing. It's a self-serve self experience. Uh, like all of many of us here love self-serve experiences. So we covered a little bit about what, uh, what the documentation can do for you, right? And how it can solve the documentation problem. So the next step is, how do I know? Do I have good docs or do I have bad docs? And do I need to do something about it? So um, the approach that I, that I offer very often to people is try kind of looking at a few examples, right? You're going to go out and you're going to collect a bunch of examples. And then you're going to take a look and compare it to yours, right? And you're going to see, you know, of these broad categories that we have, beside, uh, have been discussing, where exactly do I fall? Do, uh, do I have like zero docs and then I need a little bit of docs at least? Um, do I have good docs and I want to go to great, right? And you kind of uh, figure out these, these categories and figure out kind of what category do you want to go to so that you have some, some specific actionable steps that you want to go through. Let me show you some, some specific examples. So this is an example, maybe you can see a little bit here, but this is basically a GitHub repo, right? This is a product, this is an open source product from a company called Artsy. This is an amazing company, they are doing really, really cool stuff. And the product is really interesting. The documentation is basically a readme in the in the root of the GitHub repo, right? And it just has code snippets and stuff in it, right? And so um, this is what I call basic documentation, right? You come in, you have some examples. You don't necessarily have like a lot of stuff to go through, and it's not super easy to get around this. The kind of next level is um, a company called Mattermark. They uh, are a bit more complex. So you can see now they have um, like a little sidebar here and the design is um, uh, kind of consistent with their application. And then here you have um, all, the, all the sections and then you can aggregate this pretty easily. Um, so this is kind of the next step. This is what uh, generally you, you could consider good documentation, right, by a set of criteria. And then the third one is, um, this one I actually really like, it's a, com a company called Contentful. And they are starting, first of all, getting to get into uh, much deeper topics here, right? So they are talking about query complexity limits and stuff that you don't really get into very often. But then, you know, you have search on their website, you have kind of these uh, well typeset um, uh, things on the screen, you have decent navigation here, you have proper spacing between, uh, between things. And then the content, the most important thing, the content is good, right? So you start reading it and then you actually understand what this is for. So those are uh, kind of the buckets that I look at, but there's many more examples uh, out there, and I'm sure you have seen uh, many, right? The, the companies uh, whose products you use, you go to the documentation side, you can immediately tell, is this good documentation, is this bad documentation, right? You, you are very capable of, of uh, kind of making, uh, making this, uh, these buckets up for yourself. And so for different cases, you, can do diff you need to do different things, right? So if you have no documentation at all, right, and you want to go to the first step, okay, docs. There is kind of a very simple thing you can do. You don't necessarily need to over-engineer stuff, right? You can just, you know, create a Google Doc. You can, or a Dropbox paper document. I actually really like Dropbox paper as of recently because it allows you to like write markdown nicely and, and put codes, uh, code examples in. And you just publish that. You don't need the documentation site. You just need something, right, for people to look at so that this becomes okay docs. You can also do a nice thing and fill out the descriptions in, in, in the schema, right? So that people, you know, uh, if you are looking at the auto-generated uh, stuff, people can still understand kind of what that is for. And then if you can do GraphIQL or the GraphQL playground available so that people can interactively play with your um, API, then even better, right? But this is, you can basically do this in one day, right? I, I promise you that you can do this in one day. You can, you can at least try. And, and it doesn't take a lot of effort, and you will have OK docs right away. So this is very much kind of good uh, return on your invested time. And then after you ship uh, the, the initial version of the docs, if you can add analytics, you're going to get a lot of insight into what people are searching for. You're going to get a lot of insight into what problems people have with your product, potentially. And um, uh, this will enable you to answer those questions better. 
um, track API usage and API documentation traffic if you can, right? This is going to help you improve this because you're going to see how many people actually look at your site, right? If you don't have documentation, you don't really know how many people look at it, and then you put in tracking, and you're like, oh, you know, 10,000 people visited this page. Maybe I should fix that uh, typo, right, that I made there last year or something like that. So uh, just to keep yourself accountable. So this is basically bread and butter, right? This is the very basics of, of this stuff. The next step is if you have OK docs already and you want to go uh, to good docs, it starts to get a bit more complicated, right? So uh, when I work with clients for stuff like this, there is um, kind of different aspects that we look, in, uh, look into. And the key ones are appearance. Um, and then you can do some stuff to make your site look more beautiful, right, and, and a bit more consistent. Uh, the navigation, it's really important to have that sidebar, right, and to allow people to, to uh, navigate freely. If you can put search in, even better. Uh, there's some stuff you can do to content, right, to make sure that it's technically accurate. And then really important, put in, um, put in the, um, uh, review the articles, right, because the documentation uh, gets out of date really soon. And I'm going to share the slides if you want to kind of show this to your colleagues after or something. And then it's really nice sometimes, especially I'm not a native English speaker, so I always have someone, like if I work on documentation stuff, I always have someone double checking my work, right, and making sure that I don't make grammar mistakes and, and I don't, uh, propagate bad language, you know, that kind of stuff. So this is kind of more next level, right? This is now, you know, j not just bread and butter, but some other stuff in it. Uh, and it's starting to get uh, pretty nice, actually, and pretty fulfilling. And then the third uh, is good docs actually going to great docs, right? Now this is another kind of another level. And again, you can do different things in different categories, right? So you start looking into content and then um, kind of the, the one thing that you're starting to get in, in this level that you haven't done before is removing stuff, right? So you're like, uh, you're starting to think what is useful here and what is not useful here, right? And then you're starting removing, uh, starting to remove the stuff that is not useful. And then you optimize for clarity and technical accuracy, so you invest a lot in that. And then uh, maybe at this stage you even get an editor, right? Someone who is, who is a native speaker and then filters out all of, uh, all of your writing and makes it uh, really consistent and nice. This is more, you know, getting to the next level and, and starting to get into nicer, nicer food. And then use your imagination to understand kind of how to how would you like the experience to be, right? So uh, there is this little trick that uh, I heard in, on a podcast uh, some time ago with uh, the Airbnb chief product officer, I think. And one of the things when they were building Airbnb, one of the questions they were asking is, how does one star experience look like for Airbnb, right? And then how does a three star experience look like, five star? And then you start stretching uh, that imagination a little bit. And you're just like, how does a six star experience look like? Seven star, eight star. And so they went to infinity, right? It was uh, pretty crazy, pretty fast. But you can, you, can do this, uh, you can do this exercise for documentation as well, right? If you were a consumer that comes in and tries to use your API, how does one star documentation experience look like? And how does a three star experience look like, right? And then kind of start, start uh, thinking, uh, thinking through that a little bit and set your own goals here. All right, who doesn't love philosophy here? I'm sure everyone loves philosophy. So uh, you might uh, have uh, heard uh, about Tim Ferriss at some point or read his books or listened to his podcasts. And uh, the one thing that, uh, the, the one question that he asks, uh, asks very often is what is the one thing I can do, right, paraphrasing, to, uh, so that everything else is easier or unnecessary, right? And how does this relate to documentation, right? Maybe a bit confusing, but this has a lot to do with, with documentation as well. This is another quote from, from Lee Byron, one of the authors of, of uh, Graphio. I'm going to read you, uh, let you read it for, for a second. Assuming that you all have read it now. So the important part here is mental models, right? The mental models for GraphQL API. What that means is basically if your API fits into the existing mental models that people already have, it becomes so much easier for them to get started because they don't need to learn anything new, right? They already know what, it, what, what is necessary. This is one of the reasons why we have conventions, right? Because uh, if we have conventions, then people can come in and say, oh, I know how this works. I don't need to learn everything from scratch again, right? And so what this means is good API design simplifies the computation and simplifies the entire learning experience. If you think at the design stage about how the experience is going to look like and how hard or easy it's going to get started, it's going to be to get started with this API, then you can think about stuff like clear type and field naming, right? We can think about relationships between objects, right? And, and kind of that making sense within the, the mind of the user. And then 
consistency and following existing GraphQL conventions, that kind of stuff, right? That, uh, that's going to just, just uh, make it easier for you later. And then any marketing people in the room? Oh, there's one hand right there, okay. So um, I don't know if any of you kind of, I don't know, have side projects or play around with SEO or try to like do authority sites or something, but documentation has very high SEO value, right? Search engine optimization. Basically, you can use documentation to rank really high in Google if you really wanted to. This is just a uh, very bizarre case that I found the other day. So I was searching for um, Amazon AppSync. I don't know if any of you use that service. And then number four result is a Datadog site, right? So absolutely unrelated to, uh, to, uh, to that service that I was searching for. And this is documentation for another service that integrates with AppSync, right? And so this is the stuff you can just get for free if you do documentation. People are just gonna stumble upon your, your, your technology just because they were searching for something else, which is kind of cool. And then um, uh, good docs can also help you drive signups, right? So if you're looking for new users uh, for your API, um, if you have a really nice documentation site, which is really clear, and then you put the little sign up button uh, up there, um, I can tell you that this works, right? This actually drives signups for companies like Shopify and, and others. So people come in, look around, and they're like, oh, this is pretty much what I need, right? I feel comfortable with this. So they go ahead and sign up for your product. This is really, really powerful. And so uh, developers just explore the API, and then once they're ready, they just sign up. All right, so short summary. We have talked a little bit about why documentation is necessary for, for GraphQL APIs. We have talked a little bit about kind of all the buckets that you can have, you know, uh, no docs, OK docs, great docs, and then uh, world class, right, and exceptional docs. And kind of uh, I told you a little bit that you can think for yourself a little bit and try to understand kind of which bucket uh, does your documentation fall into and how to get to the next bucket if you, if you wanted to invest in that. And then we discussed a little bit about um, uh, kind of why, how good API design can, can help with this. Um, yeah, just remember that good docs won't help very much if you have a badly designed API, right? And then um, if you, uh, the other one, which is really important, right? If you have built an API, but customers don't really need it, then you know, your documentation is not going to change anything. So focus on building good product that solves the customer need, and then also focus on, on building a good API that actually makes sense and is pleasant to use. So um, this is me right there. If you don't like writing technical stuff and you would like me to do it, my contact is here and on the next slide as well. You can have your team come talk to me and I will produce some, some nice stuff for you. Um, the slides, these slides, and then a bunch of other uh, things that I have prepared for this, including a guide to how to go from, okay, uh, uh, can at each stage of docs what you can do, is available on the link here. And uh, I think, Milos, we can probably post it in the, in the Meetup group as well. In addition, like, feel free to make a photo or just uh, uh, look it up after. And uh, it has slides, it has a, bunch, uh, a few resources that you might find useful. So at that point, yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming and, and uh, open to questions.